Yep, double digits. We made it to double digits. Yeah. December 10th. And you know what somebody said the other day? What's that? Or yesterday? Christmas is like 14 days away. Fuck you. Yeah, that's, uh, we gotta get ready. We gotta yeah. buy gifts and stuff. <laughs> well, so. all this adventing doesn't leave a lot of time to buy gifts. Yeah. Uh, we'll get it figured out. Oh, look who's joining us. So we're gonna go straight to the wine today. It's 10. Can you do, oh, do the honors. The pulling. There's a white. Oh, it's gonna be a white. It is a Pinot Grigio Blush. I don't, what's, I, the, what's with the label on the top? It's different. Oh. What is that? Oh, Rex is getting very anxious about his Omega treats. Yeah, it's weird. What does that say? Does it say something? Um, Here. It's, I don't know what, it's uh, It's some kind of like stamp. You'll see in the picture. Mm, it smells delightful. It smells like melon. I'm getting hints of melon. We haven't been finishing these, you know. Finishing our wine in general. Yeah. I did last night. Yeah. I feel like it doesn't really offer much. It just sort of tastes like generic white wine. All right, I'm gonna get the beer out, and then okay. we'll talk about our second movie here that we've watched. It's on our like favorite sort of movie experiences of the 2010s. I'm gonna go ahead and get these Omega snacks doled out. Getting the shake down here. What is this? Ooh, that looks. It is nice. a blonde beer. Just a Belgian blonde. I like the label. That's how I judge beers. You might like this. It's slightly hot. Uh-oh. It just tastes like sort of beer, generic beer. Look at those sun and this baby. There is a sun and a baby on here drinking beer together. Oh, just like real Germans. No, I don't like that. So the movie we watched last night was Inside Out. And so we saw it originally in the theater in like mm -hmm. 2015. We saw it when it came out, right? Yeah. Is that when it came out today? Yeah. And we were like crazy about it. Crazy enough about it to put it on our you know, top 10 movie experiences of the 2010s. I think I liked it, um, I liked it better, and I mean we have a pretty good TV and like sound bar and stuff, but I liked it better on the big screen because it's a Pixar movie, and it was really, like there were just some subtle, like their hair, the way their hair kind of shimmered, yeah. <laughs> shimmered, um, and I, it was, it was just really beautifully done movie and I, I felt like some of that was lost on like a small screen so yeah, it really like captured adolescent you know emotion and just how crazy you are like a teenager yeah I mean I think it like it was so thoughtful and it's how it explained how emotions work and, and then like the processes of, of the brain, which as anyone that knows me knows I'm fascinated with. So I think um, for any age of any person, at least for me, I know I, I found myself examining my own emotions and how I react to things. And it's sort of fun to take like to remove yourself from it and think of them as like your emotions as like entities, like other people, like living in your head. Yeah, and also sort of relive, like think about yourself as an adolescent. Yeah, and totally. Stop angry. I was and sad. And confused. Yeah, all the time. It was so many emotions, and you know your prefrontal cortex is not developed until you're in your twenties, so. And then something I thought was like, meh, 
the first time I saw it that I fucking hated this time around. It was oh. like Bingo, Bongo. Bingo, Bing fuck? Bong. Bing yeah, Bong. Yeah, he was yeah. super annoying. Just like the most annoying. He was character. her invisible friend. Like so, worst. he was Riley, the the main character's invisible friend, who kind of helps um, Joy and uh, Sadness make their way back to her. Make their way back to her main like the main office it's a you have to see it but he is super annoying and I'm not sure like they didn't get into it too much about what he really was but he's this like it's he like has the body a cotton candy body and yeah just like a bunch of bullshit an invisible like, friend it's like irritated some irritating invisible friend and we kind of we talked about it later and we both kind of wished we'd had invisible friends when we were little yeah. I never had invisible I don't think I had an invisible friend I did not. I'll have to ask my mom. Maybe I did. I don't think I knew anybody that had one. Honestly. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's just like a movie thing. Like, so hey, if anyone had an invisible friend when they were a kid, let us know. Like, do we know someone that had an invisible friend? We would really like to hear about it. Yeah, I was like a very creative, I know, like, imaginative right? child. I was I, too. I feel like if I didn't have one, then... I it feel like be. all of the people I was around, I was around a lot of adults as a child and a lot of like creative adults. And so maybe I just didn't feel like I needed one. I had people like Larry John, my godfather, who was just like magical in his own way. Um, he was sort of like my own superhero, so. All right, let's uh, <coughs> cheers and then, and then we'll just end this. What? We're not uh, gonna do the cheese and stuff? Nobody gives a shit about the cheese. Alright, I'm gonna open the cheese. Because nobody gives a shit about the cheese but me. I give a shit about the cheese and the chocolate. This is herbed Gouda. Latte Macchiato. Is this one of the first one. ones yeah. we had? We haven't had that one yet. I know. That's the, I thought it was that one. So we've been talking about we're going to hate the day that we get the baked apple truffle. Because that sounds disgusting. Oh, we mentioned it. We mentioned it. Alright. We ate our chocolate. Drinking our beer. Talking about our movie. Mm -hmm. Day 10. Let you go.